Hi, my name's Cameron Kusher, and I'm here today to give you a Northern Territory housing and economic market update. Uh, I'm the Director of Economic Research at PropTrack, and I'm looking forward to giving you this presentation. So to, so to start off with, let's have a look at how the National and Northern Territory economy is performing. If we look firstly at economic growth, at the moment it is extremely weak. Over the last year, the economy's grown in size by 1%. If we look over the last 30 years, the average rate of growth is 3%. That 1% growth is the slowest annual rate of growth outside of the pandemic since the end of 1991. If we look at growth on a per capita or per person basis, the economy has shrunk by 1.5% over the past year and GDP has fallen for six consecutive quarters. We've never seen that before. So the thing that's really driving the economy at the moment is the volume of people coming into the country. And you can also see that government spending is a big driver of economic growth at the moment. Inflation's been our biggest headache over the last couple of years, and it continues to be problematic. So inflation has slowed, but the Reserve Bank's target range is for inflation to be 2 to 3%. And you can see that both headline and underlying inflation remain above that level. Now, we'll probably see underlying uh, headline inflation rather drop into the target range over the next couple of quarters. That's mainly because there's rebates and subsidies that state and federal governments are using, which will temporarily rarely slow inflation. But once they're removed, they'll probably push headline inflation back out of the target range. So the Reserve Bank is going to be focusing much more on underlying inflation, and they're not forecasting it to return to the target range until late at the end of next year, or even towards the middle of the year following 2026. So inflation is still problematic at the moment, albeit it's not as problematic as it was 12 or 18 months ago. If we look at the interest rate environment, because of that high level of inflation, interest rates have risen and they're now sitting at 4.35%. And they've been there since November of last year. Uh, we saw the Reserve Bank governor recently say that she and the board don't expect interest rates to fall until next year. And the current expectations are we get our first interest rate cut in February of next year, and then several further cuts as the year progresses, which I think seems pretty reasonable to me. If we look at the unemployment rate in Northern Territory, it's sitting at 4.2%, which is right on the national uh, average. Uh, over the last 30 years, the unemployment rate has averaged 4.9%, uh, which is much lower than what we've seen at most other parts of the country. Uh, so the labour market is very tight at the moment. And you can see that over the last uh, 12 months, uh, we've created 2.1 jobs, uh, two point, or the number of jobs has grown by 2.1%, which is right in line with that 30-year average as well. If we look at the lending environment in the Northern Territory, it's quite different to what we're seeing at a national level. So in August, the number of subsequent buyer uh, lending commitments was up 5.2% from a year ago. Nationally, that's up about 14%. First home buyer lending was up 11%, and it was pretty similar at a national level. But lending to investors was down 14.2%. Uh, and if we compare that to nationally, investor lending has increased 30%. So investors are, are performing very differently in the Northern Territory to what we're seeing elsewhere. One of the broader economic problems at the moment is we're not building enough housing, and we know that the federal government's housing accord plans to build 1.2 million new homes over the next five years. Uh, that's going to be very difficult. And one of the reasons why it's going to be difficult is because how expensive brand new homes are at the moment compared to existing homes. Now, there's two components of construction costs. There's the inputs, which is all the materials, and there's the outputs, which is actually building things. So input costs have increased by 1.1% over the past year, and they're 34% higher since the beginning of the pandemic. Output costs for houses have increased by 4.3% over the past year. And you can see that annual rate of growth has actually lifted a little bit. And those prices are up 41.5% over the last, uh, over the four years of the pandemic. And then you've got other residential, which is medium and higher density. Those costs are up 7.7% over the past year. And there's been a clear uplift in those costs. Now they're only up 25% since the beginning of the pandemic. Of course, the problem is, if you look at the history of this data, it's very rare that these prices fall. So we've got an, in a situation now where the cost of construction, which is always uh, brand new homes usually cost a little bit more than existing homes, but the differential is very wide at the moment. 
So people are preferencing buying an existing home rather than a new home. And you can see that playing out when we look at dwelling commencements. There's not a lot of new housing being commenced in the Northern Territory, and it's a very similar story right across the country at the moment. If we look at population growth, uh, net overseas migration to the Northern Territory has picked up significantly over the last year, uh, pretty much to record high levels. But net interstate migration, we're seeing a strong outflow of residents from the Northern Territory to other states and territories across the country. Now let's have a look at the established housing market and what we're seeing. So over the past three months, uh, dwelling prices in uh, Darwin have fallen 1.3%. They're 0.1% higher in the regional uh, Northern Territory areas. And that's flipped over the last year. So over the last 12 months, Darwin prices are just 1% higher, whereas regional Northern Territory prices are down 1.6%. That 1% growth, uh, is the weakest of any capital city that has seen price growth. So somewhere like Perth, for example, prices are up 23%. Uh, prices in Adelaide and Brisbane are up 15 and 14%. Sydney prices, they're up about 6%. Canberra, a little bit stronger than that. But in Hobart, we've seen a 1% fall in prices. And in Melbourne, we've seen a 1.5% fall in prices over the past year. So pretty modest growth in Darwin at the moment. In terms of the supply of stock available for sale, so we've seen a 15.7% fall in the number of new listings compared to a year ago. Uh, but you can see there that red line, which is the previous five-year average. And when we say that, that's the average between 2018 and 2022. You can see that the number of new listings is still much higher than that average. So there's quite a lot of stock coming onto the market. Then when we look at the total supply of stock, it's actually now lower than the five-year average, and it's down 8.4% from a year ago, but it's still at quite an elevated level. So there is quite a bit of choice for people wanting to buy in the Darwin market at the moment. In the regional areas of the state, new listings are down 19% from a year ago, uh, and they're pretty much bang on that five-year average level. And then total listings are up 12.7% from a year ago, but they remain slightly lower than that five-year average level. If we look at sales volumes, so even though there's not a lot of stock on the market or, com or coming to the market, we're getting a lot of sales. So there's a 40.5% increase in preliminary sales in Darwin in August uh, compared to last year. And you can see it's the strongest year any year since 2019 in August. And then regionally, it's a bit of a different story. Yes, sales volumes are up from a year ago. Uh, but they're quite low uh, if we're comparing back to sort of 2022, uh, 2020, and 2021 levels. In terms of the level of inquiry per listing, it has picked up in both Darwin and in regional Northern Territory, a 38.9% rise in Darwin, an 8.2% rise in the regional areas. And if we're looking at how long properties are sitting on the market for, so in Darwin at the moment, it's 83 days. In regional Northern Territory, it's 120 days. Uh, Darwin days on market is slightly lower than it was a year ago, whereas days on market in regional Northern Territory is slightly higher than they were a year ago. Darwin's still below that five-year average, whereas regionally it's above that five-year average. If we look at the outlook for the market, like firstly, um, if we think about recent decades and, and how prices have risen, there's been three big drivers or four big drivers. Three of them are unlikely to be as strong going forward. So at the start of the 90s, interest rates were 18%. They fell to about 2%. As they fell, borrowing capacities increased significantly. Through the 90s and 2000s, credit was easier to access. Over the last 10 to 15 years, it's become a lot harder to access finance. It's a lot more intrusive when you go and take a loan, and that reduces how much you can borrow. The employment participation rate at the moment nationally is at a record high. A lot of that's been driven by more women joining the workforce, which has pushed up household incomes and allowed people to borrow more. None of those three drivers are likely to be as strong going forward. And what that's likely to mean is that price growth will not be as strong as it has been in the past. Even, even though that's the case, and even though interest rates have increased so significantly and are at the highest level in, in 12 years, the level of demand for housing at the moment is, is still pretty strong. Um, and, and we're seeing that replicated by the volume of stock selling and the fact that uh, inquiries per listing are still higher and at that elevated level. Uh, but we are starting to see more stock for sale. That has resulted in that slowing of price growth because buyers have a lot more choice. And that increase in supply means more competition for stock, uh, less fear of missing out. So for vendors, 
they need to be real, really, really realistic on price because buyers can be a lot more selective in this market. I think the high cost of new housing will continue to see people ex uh, choose existing homes rather than new homes. Uh, we do need more infill housing, probably not as much of a, a problem in Northern Territory as it is elsewhere, but there is a lot of political and financial hurdles around that. And I think the high cost of renting is likely to see more people try and become first home buyers, especially as interest rates start to come down over the next few years. And speaking of the rental market, let's take a look at what's happened. So over the past year, rental growth in Darwin has been pretty soft, only 2.6% increase in rents. And regionally, rents are exactly where they were 12 months ago. If we look at rental yields, pretty attractive rental yields in Darwin and, and regional Northern Territory. We know that the rental returns are, are generally quite strong across the territory. And that's one of the fundamental reasons why we do see a lot of investment in that market. We know it's a very transient population and without investors, it doesn't really work so well. In terms of the number of new rental listings in Darwin, you can see here they're lower than they were a year ago. Uh, and then total rental listings are also at very low levels. So even though we haven't seen a lot of rental growth, we uh, have seen a very low supply of stock available for rent. And it's quite a similar story regionally as well. Low volumes of uh, new listings in regional Northern Territory and a very low volume of overall listings on the market as well. And they're well below that five-year average level. In terms of rental inquiry per listing, it is higher than it was a year ago. So demand is, is starting to shift a bit higher, uh, up 4% in Darwin, up about 40% in regional Northern Territory. And then if we look at rental vacancy rates, it's still a very tight market with a vacancy rate below 1% in Darwin and sitting at 1% in regional Northern Territory. And then if we have a look at how long properties are sitting on the market for, uh, 21 days, uh, in Darwin at the moment, and in regional Northern Territory, it's 27 days, which is higher than it was at the same time last year. So what's the rental market outlook? There's been a few things that have driven prices uh, of rents higher over recent years. A reduction in household size through the pandemic, uh, low levels of new housing construction due to the high cost, labour shortages, high interest rates. And then once we opened borders again, a really rapid rebound in population growth, mainly from migration, mainly from people who are here temporarily wanting to rent a property. So rents have continued to rise over the past year, but that rate of growth uh, has been fairly sluggish. Uh, supply, though, the overall stock on the market is still pretty uh, tight. And unlike most other parts of the country, we're not really seeing a lot of investors coming into the market. The biggest challenge for renters now, though, is the cost of everything has gone up so much that affording rents is a challenge. So people are choosing to live in less ideal locations, in smaller properties, or not really out of want, but out of necessity, moving into shared accommodation or bringing people in to live with them. How do we solve what's happening in the rental market? We need more supply. So you know, housing takes time to build, and there's a lot of challenges around building uh, right now. So the other thing you can do is get more people investing in residential property, which is starting to happen broadly at a national level, but not so much in the Northern Territory. On the demand side of things, you can lower the rate of migration, which the federal government is trying to do with student visa caps. You can increase rental assistance, which they've done for two years. That's after 20 years of basically not touching it. Um, and of course, people on lower incomes are the most at risk at falling into homelessness. The other thing you can do is try and help first home buyers leave the rental market and buy their first home. But again, that's a challenge to save a deposit at the moment with the cost of living going up so much, the cost of rent going up so much, and wages not keeping pace. I think, though, that the expectation of further increases in rents and those really attractive yields in the Northern Territory should see more investors coming into the market. And it may encourage renters with the ability to do so to exit and purchase, especially as interest rates start to fall over the next 12 months or so. So that's the end of the presentation from me. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, good luck for the remainder of the year, and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the presentation.